Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Night Live with Bill Tucci. Behold his mighty hand. Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang. Tucci gang. I just want to manage expectations. Weird. Weird. This is the worst. The bell. <laughs> I was like, is he going to do the bell tonight? We got to have the bell. Got to have the bell. What is going on, Brother Scala? Oh, you know, buddy, I'm excited. I'm excited. We got a great show this week, man. Got some great guests on tonight. Yep. Legendary guests, I should say. Yep. How was how was your day before we get in our guests and start hyping up? It was fantastic, dude. Fantastic. Working on the site, still developing that with the team. You know, taking in all of our uh, lovely guest requests, me and, uh, you know, Frank Amazing working on that. Man, we're getting, we are literally getting, I, I kid you not, we counted, we're getting an average of 28 requests a day. No way. Yeah. I didn't, it must be like booming. It's like a, like a baby booming era of crowdfunding right now. Well, that's because great. It, I the, love the requests it. are great. And a lot of them are, a lot of them are international too. Oh, and, that and I'm like, well, what time zone are you in? You know, and some of them are like, oh, so we'll be on at like 4 a.m. my time. I'm like, if you want to do it, that's what you got to do. Got to do it. Gotta well, do I've been it. working. I, I had a nutty day. If you, if, you, if you saw that, she and Lady Death are going to be this year's uh, Overstreet Price Guide covers. Yes. And um, look at that, Bailey. Yeah, I made the I made the R2 small, though. Oh jeez, Jeff Vaughn. So I've been adding. So I got to add all these skulls. I got to draw it to the bottom, to the sides. Oh really? See, so I the, I got to extend it all. And uh, how are you doing that? Are you gonna like? Well, the hard cover is fine, but the soft cover, um, I have to. Uh, I don't know why. It's just a way to for it's because it's not comic book size format. Yes, yes, indeed. So I have to uh, add some stuff to the edges. So I've been doing that, trying That's to match hard. things up and. I don't know, man. I can't do that. But you know, hey, you know, it looks cool. I love your sweater. Thank you. It looks so comfy. Well, it's cold, right? It's cold <laughs> and drizzly here up in the northeast. It's did your furnace blow. What happened? One of our friends is in like turts and Caicos and sending photos and stuff, and I'm like, and you're in that lovely turtleneck. Yeah, what are my glasses? Do on? they call that a turtleneck when it's that poofy? It's a turtle. This is like a true turtle. I don't know. Is that like yeah, a turtleneck? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I'm like, I need a sweater. I need a turtleneck sweater for winter. <laughs> so this is what came on Christmas. I feel like you have like a little pipe or something. I got my pipe. It's lovely. I, I'll smoke my out. pipe. Anyway, let's let's enough about me. <laughs> let's uh we got awesome guests today. Yes, yes. I'm excited. Awesome guests tonight. They got a great, they got two Indiegogos going. One for a graphic novel, which is live, and one for a film, which is in demand. So they crowdfunded their you know, the, using the crowdfunding funds to to help produce and finish their film and shoot it mm -hmm. and uh, and they're doing the the graphic novel which you know that's what we like you know i'm into that part i mean yes. who's not into film and it's in a genre we love my friend a genre we love but why don't we bring in my buddy and then let's have him introduce oh, his guest let's put him on the spot Can billy we do that Can we bring in um artist extraordinaire writer and now budding movie star apparently I uh, coming down from old South Kakalaki, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the man who I still hate Bo Smith to this day for introducing me to all those years ago, my friend, Mr. Marlon Shoot. What's up, bud? <laughs> what is up? Billy? Crazy oh. bastard, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, my gosh. That was, a, that was a while ago, too. Dude, it's like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that. that well, that was the one in where was that at? Was it Ohio? Oh, it was in Ohio, middle yeah. Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. That's when uh, is that when Joe Kubert was there? Yes, I think so. Which 
I I was uh I was at his school. Oh, did you a Cubert School alumni? Yeah. Oh. Did you graduate? Uh, two years. Yeah, I don't know anyone who graduated from that school. <laughs> I don't know anyone that actually graduated either. <laughs> like yeah, like okay, I learned enough. I'm I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I have their I have their take home books, like the ones oh. that you would like do from home and send in. Right, right. They're just for display. Oh, yeah, I hard. used to see them because one of one of our teachers, it was Sergio, uh, Sergio Cariello. Yeah, he was doing the grading on those take home books. The ones that you send it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's a beast. Yeah. But my friend Apex Comics is asking right now that Ara uh, Galanian, the uh, the Armenian knight, says hello. So hello, good to see you. Hello. Uh, Apex Comics wants to know where Cynthia Rothrock. Oh, so by George, my friend, why don't you do the introduction and let's bring in this welcome beautiful Jerry Cynthia Rothrock into the mix. <laughs> I guess that that was so lame, dude. I gave you a legendary. Yeah, come on. Martial man. artist extraordinaire, what? producer, Fire. writer. Everybody knows her. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to talk to the producer of this film and have you removed from those scenes. Uh, Ladies I mean, and gentlemen, uh, uh, an, a dynamite superstar who needs no introduction. Yes. Uh, the one, the only, Miss Cynthia Rothrock. Hello. <laughs> I, I just want to say, Phil, I have a brown turtle. Because <laughs> it's cold here, too. And are you in California? <laughs> I am. It gets cold here too. It gets cold in California. <laughs> yes, it does. It's never been cold when I've been in California. It has been or hasn't? Never. It was always like warm. I've always been to like San Diego to LA area though. I never. Yeah, oh, I did go to San Francisco. LA area, but it, yeah, it's uh, well, you know, we've been having all those rains and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's chilly. Excellent. Well, thank you guys. Bye, July, sir. What did you say? Comic Con's in July. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. San Diego's in July, and then whenever I had meetings, I would just always go there. And it always seems like you know May. It's summertime months, or yeah. never there in the winter, which is well, there you go. <laughs> which is good. Well, it's so great to have you on. Um, thank you for joining us. Like I said, we go about forty-five minutes or so. Um, let's dive into it. What's going on with you guys? Um, tell us, uh, Nyla, if you want to share this the the, yeah. the campaign. So we don't waste these wonderful people's time anymore that we already have. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we have uh, the campaign going on for the graphic novel. Uh, we just uh, completed uh, in November the uh, um, filming of the Black Creek, the movie, and now we're doing the novel. And it's funny because Marla and I, I don't know, maybe 20 years or so, we've always talked about, you know, doing a graphic novel. And then after we um, did the movie, we thought this is going to be so great for that kind of uh, genre to go into the graphic novel that we we put it together and we are live right now on Indian go go and uh, people can go and they can see black creek novel uh, com and that'll take you to the indiegogo site and I'm, I'm so excited because we do i think the greatest perk here is that someone could get drawn into the novel as a character oh. from black creek with their likeness excellent that is awesome excellent so how did this guys how did this come about how did you know marlon and and cynthia how did you guys come together to not you know to want to make a you know a, a graphic novel and also to make a you know a, a film with you know how did this well, how did you guys meet leading all the way to where we got to black creek oh my gosh that was what 20 years ago it was 20 years ago in orlando uh it was at uh it was at a show F it was the fx show and cynthia was a last minute guest with david carradine and uh i i had to go meet cynthia because i grew up you know watching her movies and mm -hmm. i did martial arts myself and got my black belt that's pretty much how i introduced myself to her i without you know trying to stumble over my words but she had said that she uh had tried to do a comic with Bo uh and steve root i was like oh man that would have been amazing yeah you know? Going. Oh, well, that was like seven years ago. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I had done a sketch, I believe. Yeah, I did a sketch of her, of what she would look like as a comic book character. And uh, yeah, from then on, we, we tried to get something going and it always, you know, failed through. But 
I stayed in touch with her trying to do something. And then, you know, Black Creek, she started the campaign with Black Creek. And I said, hey, do you need a storyboard artist? And so I did the storyboards for the movie. That's great. Yeah. And so, and then a lot of buzz started happening about doing the graphic novel. And she was, you know, she was like, oh, well, we need to do that. <laughs> Yeah, and the wonders of crowdfunding, because this channel, with the Pop XP, we originally started off as crowdfunding comics. Um, and uh, and then because of, we've expanded, you know, to, to have like media people and talk about it. So it, it turned to the Pop XP. But I got to tell you, I, I it's changed my life, crowdfunding again. Um, you know, we, we've had the best three years we've had since the late 90s. That's how crazy it's been and it all due to the people out there and thank you guys for supporting us um Absolutely. but uh so what's the story of black rock how did you guys you know you said let's do a comic 20 years ago when you were 14 well, and cynthia was 25 well, so that's cynthia, awesome. what what inspired yeah. black creek um because yeah. obviously you were starting to do the movie before you decided to do the graphic novel so what made you want to uh produce a, you know a western well, um, I've done about 70 movies and I've always wanted to do my own movie, but I, you know, it's, it's such a, a hard work and a lot, so much to do to do your own movie. And, uh, my partner, Robert Clancy, he said, let's just do it. And he said, what kind of movie do you want to do? And I said, a Western, and he went a Western. And I said, yeah, I want to do one. And I, I, cause I like Westerns. There really aren't any female gunslingers. I wanted to do something unique. I wanted to incorporate, uh, Western with martial art action because most of the Westerns you see are just typical brawl fights or, you know, a lot of guns. So I wanted to do something different. I also wanted to have an all-star cast of martial artists in it as well. And um, we just started writing the script. Uh, it came together. And then I was nervous about crowdfund raising. Um, and uh, my friends told me, he said, no, you can't, don't do it. Don't do it. He goes, one of the male, uh, Action Stars uh, was unsuccessful at it, you know, and so I was nervous about it. And then I just kind of said, you know what, I'm going for it and we're going to go full force into it. And um, within three days, we raised our, our first goal because I didn't know how much to put for the goal, because obviously, you know, on Kickstarter, if you uh, don't get your complete goal, mm -hmm. you know, at anything so we went smaller and then i was just so happy and you know our first movie was completely um black creek uh funded for the crowd fundraising through the fans and a lot of the fans are in this movie and you know, they just did an awesome job I'm so blessed uh, that they were out there to support me and i feel like that this movie is not just my movie it's everybody's movie that supported it you know and you could ask marlon we keep contact with all the backers you know um i just love them and i'm going out of my way to help anybody that you know was a supporter and then uh we, we said well let's do the graphic novel we already had the format down of how we wanted to do the you know the campaign and um we're we're off and running on that as well so very excited that uh, a lot of good things are happening with black creek that's, that's so cool wow good for I, you and you know it's funny we've had a couple of um you know books on recently you know with the western genre and uh oh gosh why is his name mistake uh from karate kid he just did a Western comic book. Oh, um, uh, Martin. Martin, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, he, close. Yes, yes. And he did his Western comic, which is great. And we had the gentleman on that wrote it. He wasn't able to join us for that stream because of his pro uh, production schedule or whatnot. But we went on. And it's so cool to see that people are focusing on Westerns because that's one of the genres, especially in, you know, comics and graphic novels. And I'm like, we need more of that. You know, we need some more good Westerns out there. You know, Jonah Hex was probably like the last great run uh, that that was done. And, you know, now seeing, you know, your book and his book, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to see a lot more of this. And with Black Creek, you know, you're, does this graphic novel, is it just uh, an adaptation of the film or does this carry where the film leaves off? No, it's it's an adaptation. But what we're doing is we um, 
are putting in a backstory, like in the movie, you know, I know martial arts. Well, how did she learn it? Who was her teacher? You know, so we're putting in things that aren't in it. And obviously, you know, since we're not in production and we could just use our creative mind to do the fight scenes and, you know, to do the characters or change them, uh, you know, it's going to be different, but it is definitely following the guideline uh, from the movie. That's cool. That's cool. I love and that. forgive me, I called it Black Creek before. No, you Sorry. called it Black Rock. It is yeah, Black, Black Creek. Rock. Yeah. I mean, I, I called <laughs> it Black <laughs> Rock like an idiot. Sorry. Black Rock's uh, a financial firm, Billy. Come on. Yeah. Come on. We're not here <laughs> yeah, talking yeah, finance. Black that Rock now. <laughs> yeah, I forgive me. That, no, Black Creek sounds better. Um, <laughs> can, we can we show the trailer? Yeah, I was just going to say, why don't we check out the uh, yeah, video yeah. here? That's a great trailer. That's a great trailer. That was a great trailer. It was great art, Marlon. Looks fantastic too. It looks Thank fantastic. You. Um, so Cynthia, what's the story of Black Creek, and how did it? You know, how did this? Without come too about? many spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, well, basically, you know, we were like, OK, what's the, the plot of it? And I was like, revenge. And uh, basically, my uh, brother gets killed and um, a couple of my family members from the, the villain, Richard, who is Richard Norton. And he's basically trying to take over uh, this silver mine that my brother owns and my brother won't give it to him. So he comes and kills them. They take over the town. It becomes very gritty. And uh, he's like sadistic and you know, we get into a little bit of creep factor in it. And then I come back and I find this. And then basically uh, it, the theme of it is restitution, um, you know, which he says to my brother, this is, you know, restitution and he kills him. And then, you know, the whole thing is me coming after him and, you know, uh, yeah, without giving too much away in the end, you know, big mm -hmm. climactic fight with him. You know, but we have a lot of martial arts. We have uh, Don the Dragon Wilson in it, um, who... Cool done probably over 50 movies uh richard norton uh we have benny the jetter ketis uh keith vitale marcus taylor uh keith cook and then you'll see a lot of other grandmasters like stephen hayes you know uh you know uh rick st Clair, steve ross pop up into it and i wanted a film where you know i had like all my friends the action stars in it but then i wanted people to say well wait a minute wait a minute was that marlon shoop right there throwing up <laughs> <laughs> So, so um, Cynthia and Marlon, like, what came first, the the screenplay, or did the script for the for the graphic novel come first? How did that, you know, come about for the story itself? Well, well, first the screenplay, mm -hmm. and then, um, you know, like like Marlon said, we've been talking about doing a comic for so long. You know, we just and it's just that we, you know, it's a lot of work putting the campaign together and then getting the story and everything. And then it was just like a no brainer, you know, after we did uh, the movie to say, look at, you know, Marlon did these great storyboards, you know, and and it's funny we have a joke going on because like so many times Marlon doesn't get my nose right. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, we do her nose. It's always the nose, you know. And then, like, my chin was pointy, and I'm like, "Am I gonna poke someone's eyes out with that chin?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, he is so awesome. Um, we are so blessed, like, to have him on, on board. That uh, it's it's going to be phenomenal, you know, with his artistic talent and my crazy creative mind and our partner Robert Clancy. You know, we're trying to make something different, you know, different that you know. Uh, that's kind of what I'm about. I'm kind of that person that I like to do things that are are unique. And in Black Creek, it's very dark. It's very gritty. Um, it isn't for the faint at heart. And and that's the, the kind of movies I like. And I think what really excited me is after I was watching Yellowstone, I just live, love the grit to it and yeah. just the feel of that. And and that's kind of how I wanted uh, that feeling to be on on Black Creek and also in in the graphic novel. Now, have have you always been interested in comics? Because I know, you know, Marlon mentioned something about a while back doing a book with Bo and stuff and, and Steve Rude. Um, so has that always been an interest for you in comics? Like, did you read comics? I did, you know. Oh, gosh, I'm going back, but I remember the Archie. <laughs> you know, the Archie <laughs> comic books, right? And, and uh, Batman Superman. Yeah, I always liked I always liked comics. And then I got into it more when, uh, you know, like I think the action in the comic world kind of crosses together, like when you do comic cons, you know. So yeah. I've been invited. I get invited to a lot of comic cons. And it was funny. The first one I did was in Texas. And I thought, oh, they're going to know comics. They're not going to really know me. So I only took like one stack of pictures and the first day I sold them out. And I was like, Oh my God, because comic book people are also martial art fans as well. So it's just a beautiful uh, combination of putting, you know, this uh, martial art Western comics, you know, into it. And um, yeah, I've met so many great people, you know, in the comic world. And it's just a, it's a dream I've always had. I wanted to have a comic book, you know, and we're finally, yep. You know, Marlon and I are uh, are doing it. So it's like, can you believe it? It took us like 20 years. <laughs> well, now, can you bring the campaign up real yeah, quick? bring it back up. Because I was looking in, and uh, I mean, it's a great looking campaign. If you could scroll, Niall, um, a lot of great tiers. And one of them that I found really interesting, if you go to the right, Niall, is the, uh, the, the uh, yeah, concept art, plus concept art. Um, what does that include concept art? Is it designs, character designs, things like that? Character designs, set design. Yeah, because I was thinking of a thing is, is that you storyboarded this film. I did. The actual film. I don't know if you did it on the film, um, on the, on the film uh, campaign, but what about like an ash can edition or a black and white edition, which would be a, you know, storyboard edition? Of, of the storyboard pages with maybe little notes in between. Because I, I love stuff like that. And I think that could be a really cool tier. Oh, he's just being selfish of, right now. Yeah. Is he that, just wants you to make something he wants, Marlon. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Because yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great idea because I, I you know, I, I have like in for Black Creek, you know, for one of the collector items that I'll probably put on later is my script where I have all the notes and yeah. changes and stuff like that. I, uh, yeah, I love that stuff, too. That's great. And uh, with Marlon, when we went out uh, uh, scouting the location, we knew we were going to do it at Mescal Ranch in uh, Arizona. And mm. that's where they shot, you know, the Quick and the Dead, uh, Outlaw Josie Whale Tombstone, you know, so it's this iconic place that shot these great Westerns. So Marlon Marlon went out and he looked at everything and, and he already knew the script and what was going to be and then started like sketching, you know, from that, taking videos, taking pictures. So when we went into production, we pretty much, Marlon had, you know, the storyboards pretty much already uh, yeah. completed. Yeah. Well, I know the Cohn brothers uh, are famous for literally storyboarding their entire films out. And right. when they were using film before digital, they would save so much footage. I, they would be like, yeah, the most we've ever shot was like 250,000 feet or whatever. That that sounds like a lot, but apparently for a movie, it's really not with film or, or whatever they did um, because they would just, they, 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 they worked so hard on the storyboards and knew the film that they were making when they went in to make it. Um, did that help the process with you guys? Did it speed things along? Did it make things easier and all? For me, <laughs> I, yeah, I need an answer. <laughs> Marlon, Marlon, how many days were you on set? You were on set. Uh, I was there for a week. 
Yeah, so he was there for half the shoot. <laughs> yeah. You shot this in two weeks? It is so yeah. crazy. You are not going to believe this. Uh, we, we, we've we done it. Uh, our, I mean, everybody, our, uh, our fight choreographer, our actors, when we see it go, oh, my God, how did we shoot that? It looks, uh, it looks so awesome, you know, and I have a, one of the things that was funny is I had a, a lot of night scenes because I wanted like the fire torches, you know, in the corral, you know, mm -hmm. I just wanted that eerie kind of creepy look and it was freezing. It was like what, like 10 degrees or something at night and yeah. everybody was like so cold and I felt so bad because, you know, we just, some people just had Western wear on, not so many jackets, but just the look of it, it just, it does not not look like it's like we shot it in 14 days you know and uh, my That's dream incredible. is that we're already writing uh, the sequel because we think this is going to be so great and people are going to really love it that if we have like 25 days to shoot oh my god what can we do what can we do you know and um it's just it it, it really is almost like a miracle that what we got for 14 days of shooting yeah because it's it's a period piece so yeah, you need costumes. You need the look. You need, you know, the horses. You need wagons. You need saloons. You know, you need to dress. I mean, the town is there apparently, but to dress it up, and then you have the, the fight scenes, choreography. You have to choreograph this aside from just acting. You know, I know. And, it, it was, and then you've got gunplay. I'm sure. I'm telling you, it's all because the backers helped us out so much. I mean, a lot of people. We actually. Uh, Robert Clancy and I des designed the wardrobe for most people. A lot of the backers got their own and we would have them take pictures and say, this is what you need. You can get it here. You know, so we kind of ran also the the costumes, you know, which was a, a big feat, you know, in itself to do that. And, uh, you know, our backers were just so excited to be on there um, that, you know, they said, this is like a dream come true for me to be in this movie, you know, and to experience it, especially everything was shot in that one town, you know, so when yeah. you're in that one town you almost feel like that's what life is life is like that you know in that town uh but you know our sets were amazing um like i said the the costuming was so good and uh, i think you know everybody just came in with like 110 percent that i'm gonna do make this film really good you know how much time was there leading up to actually filming because obviously you have to coordinate the costumes you probably are practicing the choreography ahead of time you know getting everything set what is that process prior to actually getting on set to now put everything yeah. together and film it we we were working on it probably for about eight months like really strong like getting everything together and you know i brought in five people from europe uh as the stunt team um because i wanted uh mike moeller was the head of it and uh noel Ga gaylord and uh you know people were like why are you bringing people in from europe that cost so much money and i said because i don't want this to be a typical low budget independent action picture. I want this to be, it's my first project and I want everybody to be proud of it. Like, and like, I'm so picky. Like, you you know, you could ask Marlon, I'm like, even on the, the comics, I get so picky, but same thing on the scenes, you know, because I want everybody to look good. I want the action to be good. And uh, Mike Moeller uh, put all the scenes, he choreographed them all together and then he sent them to me and then I would go over them and then I would send it to some of the characters and I say, please study this, you know, and, um, because we really didn't have too much rehearsal time. It was like, get on set, rehearse it a little bit and, you know, just go shoot it, you know? And, um, it, it, you know, when you see this film, you'll, you'll be, um, you just won't believe that, that that could be shot in 14, 14 yeah, days. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, it's astonishing, you know, to, to actually to, sh to, to shoot an entire film in like two weeks. And now, well, because like, I'm curious about, now you, you, you did it in Arizona. Um, did did they have like a is the your costumes and your firearms you know from your armor and all that is that there in Arizona is that since they've used that for films and stuff do they have a a warehouse an office you know like like where did you get all your yeah. again you shoot you're not shooting you on the on you know on, in a park on a Sunday you know <laughs> well we had one big room and the big room was wardrobe on one side makeup on one side special effects over here and then extra holding right here was a big room so uh 
basically we, uh, Robert and I brought a lot of the stuff. We rented uh, a big uh, a camper. We brought all the stuff mm -hmm. out. Uh, the actors, we made sure those that had their costumes were bringing it. And when they would get there, we'd have to check, have them put it on, make sure everything was authentic. Because one of the things, it was like 1890, you know, so we wanted to make sure that everything is exact period to that, you know, mm -hmm. and um it, it, it was it was crazy, you know, I mean, our special effects guy was amazing, you know, and people just, you know, uh, just 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 came to be part part of it, you know, and um, it was yeah. a it, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's exciting. I get goosebumps, you know, to, and to know like when we do part two, if, what we could do if we have more money and we have yeah. uh, we have more days yeah. to shoot. Oh, yeah, so, you will for sure. Um, something yeah. came up this week. I think it was today or yesterday. Um, just to show how involved the film is. And if you don't mind me sharing this, something that I just saw, um, again, using what happened on the, the Alec Baldwin set of, um, what was it, Rust, Rust or something? I mean, if you see that the armor, you know, that she was found guilty of, you know, involuntary manslaughter, you know, by, because you're using real guns, you know, on these things. It's not, you're not shooting little cap guns and all. And I'm just, just, nuts you know that this is this is a big big thing you know this you know to make a film it's so involved and that was for a television series or or, or um i guess it's a it's a series for sure yeah but um i don't know you know like i said where did you find i mean you had to find someone right who actually was a professional yeah. so how yeah. do you find these professionals is that because you've worked with them for so long and you just know so many people that you've been doing this since you're like 14 years old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, like our gun handler, I have worked on a picture with him before that he was on. And I know he was, he is so uh, on his game, you know, and he brought right. like, all the weapons and we were so particular on this. Uh, you know, of course, you know, we don't have as much gunplay in it as you, a, a Western would because we're fighting, but we do have gunplay in it. Uh, you know, he would check it. Uh, our first AD would check it. The actor would check it. And then he would say, anybody else on set want to check it? Um, so we were we were very, very watchful. I think only a few times we used live rounds. We're going to do a, some CGI, you know, with the, with the guns and stuff like that, especially if there was a lot of people around in the crowd. We were using extreme safety on that because of, you know, situations like that. So, you know, I think it, it, everybody is aware, even extras, anybody on the set, you know, that safety is so important. And before every scene, you know, that we were going to have guns in, we would have a meeting of everybody to come and explain what was going on you know and uh how we were doing it mm -hmm. yeah with a western so with making a western then incorporating a lot of martial arts into that is the martial arts part of the story or is it just in there as part of the the action and the fighting well you know it takes place in the 1800s so there were you know in um we don't really say it's Arizona, so you don't really know where uh, it's shot, but that was a conglomerate of so many people coming in for silver, coming in for gold, you know, that you had so many different uh, ethnic people. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of Chinese people there too. So uh, we don't really say this is where in the graphic comic book, we're going to say where that some of that training comes in place, but not in the movie. So it's just, uh, I felt it wasn't really a need to have to explain that, you know, that, you mm. uh, you know, and and I kind of thought of it as uh, even though it was a small budget, like shooting the movie as a graphic novel, you know, in my mind, I was trying to think like how John Wick was like how they shot it. Obviously, we had nowhere close to that money, but, you know, it could be over the top a little bit here and there, you know. Yeah, oh, that's, hell that's, yeah. Is it, that's what was in my mind. And I'm so excited for the graphic novel because it could be over the top in my mind and Marlon's fingers, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I'm telling him, let's do this, let's do this because now we can, you know, it doesn't matter. We don't have the budget that, you know, we need to, to shoot it. So let's just put it in the comic book. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's cool about a comic is that you can have a, you know, giant yeah. battles and all this stuff. and. <laughs> And uh, that that's what part of the beauty of it. Well, that that campaign for the film too. For those, if if we can, I'll, I'll share the. Um, I've got it up here. You got the film yep. campaign up too. Look at you, Scala. Oh, One man. step ahead. I got to be can prepared, Gucci. You got to be prepared. Yeah, I know you totally are prepared. Um, can we uh, show this video too? And since this campaign's in demand, because comics may not be for everyone. Let's just say. 
but this film is still funding for this film. They're they're in post production now. It's 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 all shot. Uh, as Cynthia was saying, there's some CGI they want to add to it, and also every little bit helps because I just love this idea of these these artists coming together and like friggin' we'll make our own film in the movie we want to make. Yes. So if you don't mind sharing that now. Hi, this is Cynthia Rothrock, and I want to tell you about my upcoming film, Black Creek. I've done over 70 movies, and I finally decided to do my own film to play the character I want, the genre I want, the cast I want, and the fight scenes to be how exactly I want them to be. And this is very important to me because this is a very strong female character in a Western that really does martial arts. I have the most incredible cast, just to name a few. I have Don the Dragon Wilson, Richard Norton, Billy Blanks, Betty Arquitas, Kevin Sorbo. There's so many people. This is the film of all the action stars that you want to see. We've had a very successful campaign on Kickstarter. So we are funded and we are definitely going to do this movie. So I had people contact me and they say, I'm a backer slacker. Uh, I wanted to get in on the campaign. So we're doing this second campaign. And the reason for that is that I would like to add two more shooting days uh, to the schedule. The reason for that is I don't want the fight scenes to be fast. I want really concentrate on them and get the action as best as I can. So you can be part of Black Creek. We have great incentives that you can check out. Uh, and it's, it's going to be awesome. It really is going to be an epic picture. There's a lot of buzz all over the internet. And you could be part of Black Creek. I would love to have you as a backer and part of my film. I'm pumped about this. Like, I, I really want to see this movie now. <laughs> when? So when is the... Uh... Well, the, hopefully the the launch date, like when you're actually going to release the film out. Yeah, we hope uh, we hope to have a trailer uh, by by April for sure, uh, mm -hmm. beginning of April. So we're working on that as well, uh, and then we hope to finish it by June. Have the movie completely finished by June. Uh, Black Belt Magazine, who is the largest. Uh, um, martial art magazine in the world is sponsoring two big uh, red carpet premieres for us. One will be in Vegas and one will be uh, in Los Angeles. And we're hoping uh, possibly to have our first screening in Las Vegas in July. Oh, awesome. Great. Awesome. And then it goes, are you looking at any streaming platforms to carry it? Uh, right now, uh, it, it, you know, it's interesting because a lot of people that I know that have done their own films, you know, have a hard time of getting a distributor. And I've had about eight distributors contact me right now saying they want to distribute the film. And some of them aren't like just action genre ones. Like they have like big stars like Julianne Moore, uh, you know, Gary Oldman, all this and that. So I'm so excited. So, you know, with the movie, we give it to our, our distributor and then they take it and they go and sell it, you know, worldwide. So you really don't know, you know, what platform it will be on until they go and make make the distribution deals. But uh, for people to contact me just saying we've been following it on social media and this looks great. This is a movie I want to see. You know, it's so it's so exciting, you know. Um, and, you know, I'm I was like an undefeated uh, martial arts champion. So I'm such a perfectionist. Like I just like tried to make everything the best that I can. So I'm just I'm just excited. I hope everybody get loves this film as much as, you know, we all, you know, that are part of it do. Yeah. Well, when it becomes available, Billy, we're going to have to have a Black Creek Pop XP review. We have to. Oh, we do. Awesome. I think we should bring the I think we should bring the star of the film, Mr. Marlon Shoup, on as a special guest. No, we'd love to have you back on, of, of course, too. Um, Cynthia, where did you grow up? How did you get into martial arts and then acting and and now you're a producer, you're, you know, all this doing, what's your story? Uh, I, I grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, only child. My parents were not athletic at all. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I was 13, I'm, I was always like out of the box kind of person, you know, if it's something different, I want to do it. Right. I want to do that path that's less traveled. And my girlfriend's parents were doing, uh, Tung Sudo, and this is back in the seventies and, uh, 
they owned a health club and on Sunday they would come in and clean it. My friend and I would go there and practice cartwheels and flips and rolls because it was a big empty room. And uh, they came in with their uniforms on and started doing their martial arts. And I went, what is that? And they said, oh, we learn how to defend ourselves with our hands and feet. And I thought, wow, I'd never heard of that. Like this was unheard of, you know, especially little town Scranton, Pennsylvania, one karate school. Mm. So uh, I went, signed up and, um, you know, at first it was difficult being the only girl in the class. I was discouraged. But, you know, when one day my instructor said, you know, if you're a quitter, you're a loser. And if you have a bad attitude, you're going to, you know, uh, you're not going to be successful. And I realized, oh, I think he's talking to me because I'm going to, I hate push-ups, you know. So I started training my mind. Oh, push-ups are good for your chest. And I can't get this move. I'm going to practice. And then I finally got it. And then uh, when I was five and a half months training, I entered a competition that my instructor made me do. And it was with women. It was all ranks. And I took second. I was an orange belt, five and a half months. A black belt took first, black belt took third, and I took second. And I said, you know what? I am going to be the best in this field. So I trained fanatically, uh, ended up uh, becoming a world champion five years undefeated. That's like competing over a hundred times undefeated. And then my goal was to quit after five years. And then I didn't know what I was going to do. Well, on my fourth year, I was on the West Coast demonstration team, which was the biggest demonstration team in the world. And uh, they, uh, Corey Yoon, who is a big Hong Kong director, was in LA and he's looking for the next Bruce Lee. They wanted to find someone to be the next Bruce Lee. And they called uh, Ernie Reyes and said, hey, can you bring your team members down? And Ernie went, well, what about the girls? And they said, well, nah, yeah, I, you know, you can bring the girls, but we're really looking for a guy. So I went down and I did form. I did fighting. I did self-defense and I did some weapons. And Corey Yoon says, oh, I want to go with a girl. Hmm. So he signed me up. So I really, you know, I didn't have any aspirations to be an actor or movie star. I was just a teacher and was like, well, okay, I'm going to go to Hong Kong. Uh, I did my first movie with Michelle Yeoh. Uh, we did a movie called Yes, Madam. And I thought I would just do one movie. I thought, wow, this is something exciting in the life of Cynthia Rothrock. Maybe I'll be on the poster and someday I could tell my kids, look, this is your mom. Yeah, That's yeah crazy things that were going in my head. And uh, this movie took uh, eight months to shoot. I was in Hong Kong shooting it. I was 1985. And when they played it, it was so successful because it was so different. You know, people have not seen a Caucasian woman fight like that. And it, it just went crazy. And then I got a contract with Golden Harvest, um, you know, to do three more pictures. And then I, I loved it at the time. And I said, now I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. I retired number one from competition. And now I'm going to do movies. <laughs> so that's kind of how it all started. And, you know, haven't stopped since I've been doing it. You know, I took some time off when I had my daughter um, because I wanted to be mom. But, uh, yeah. then, you know, when she got a little bit older, <laughs> I got back into it. That's cool. Now, is it true that you were the inspiration for Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat? Yes, it is. Uh, actually, uh, the the guy uh, you know had had a meeting with me, and at that time, I was really at the peak of my career. And my agent said, "Whatever." I don't know how much he said, but you know, they didn't want to pay it, so they said, "Okay, we're just going to use her likeness." And there's a move I do the, the scorpion kick. Well, I actually created that move. I was. Um, I was doing a, a ballet class because I would do anything to help my martial arts excel. And we had to hold on to a bar and kick ourselves and put your foot close to your head as you can. And I did. And I almost knocked myself out. I had a bump on my head. And then my partner, George Chung, I said, let's put this into demonstration. So we started doing that. People went crazy. And then they took my move and put it in the, the Sonya Blade. So, yeah. So it was really kind of sneaky and, yeah. you know, a way of, you know, using my likeness and using my move, but not having to pay me. Yeah. Now, an odd thing I, I did read is you did some voiceover. Did you do some voiceover work? I, I voiceover. Um, I did a cartoon, Eek the Cat. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, that is. I love that, that cartoon. I did too. I mean, I think I can't remember. I think it, his name was Tom Savage or something. He had, I, I, I kind of, it's been so long, but he said, you know, I'm a big fan of yours and I do eat the cat and I want to incorporate you into the, um, into the TV show. And when I got the script, I was dying laughing. It was so funny. You know, it's like, yeah, you killed my ancestors. So now we've got to come and get you, you know, and it was just so funny. And then I had to go in 
and and you know he drew it and i had to do the voiceover for it mm -hmm. and it was hysterical because i remember the guy sitting next to me was like eight different voices and he'd be like oh piggy and they're like what are you doing you know and he's just doing all these like lines like and i'm like oh my god and i remember <laughs> I remember they said, you know, you got to talk fast, you know, really fast because we have two or three year olds watching this and they don't understand anyway. So it was, a, it was such a fun experience for me, but I'll never forget the guy next to me. And then they're like, okay, we're going to do the Walla Walla. What's the Walla Walla? Everybody go Walla Walla Walla. And that's kind of what they do for like background sound. And I never knew that. Like, because when you hear background, it sounds like Walla Walla Walla. <laughs> well, like a crowd or something, or if they're in yeah, a like class. Crowd, like, like, you know, like say, say, you know, you're in a bar and you have a background talking. Well, the, the sound that they put in is like Walla Walla. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that. That's funny. <laughs> that would be a great name for this show, Walla Walla. For Walla, Walla. Yeah. Walla Walla Live. Yeah. We did, Walla Walla we... yeah. <laughs> So what's the uh, timetable for the graphic novel, Marvel? And now that Cynthia's done all of her work, are you going to get to work, buddy, or what? I'm, I've am i been working. Not uh, hopefully, hopefully soon. I We'll see how it goes. It's yeah, just, we're trying, we're trying. Yeah, now like we have the at the Marlin is doing some of the pages. He's sending us the scripts now. One of the great things that we have, uh, you know, is that the characters, uh, uh, they could take this perk on Indiegogo, and the character will either be written into it, or they could be a backer that weren't into, were you know, might not make it into the graphic novel. But if they get that perk, you're in the movie. Uh, Marlin is drawing their exact likeness, you know, to it, and it's funny because they're as picky as I as I am with. Marlon, I'm like, uh, Mar Marlon, uh, can you can you change the hat on that? <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> like it. So we're trying to accommodate everybody. So it's it's hard, but Marlon uh, is 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 so so phenomenal, you know, with with uh, likenesses, you know. But uh, I think I drive him crazy going, uh, you know, <laughs> fix the chin, please. <laughs> I I try real hard. So how? Yeah. yeah. So we hope we actually hope that maybe when the movie comes out and we have our first screening, which, it, you know, that would we'll possibly all be ready, you know, to have the comic book released almost around the same time. That's right. great. And yeah, Marlon, wow. you're, you're doing a really a, a, a historic piece, right? It's it's, a, you know, historic fiction that you're doing, you know, with being historically accurate with the settings, the the clothing, you know, the guns, everything that's going on. Was it helpful to be on set? with all of these replicas or maybe even, you know, authentic stuff to help you now, you know, um, translate onto paper. It did. I, uh, I took lots, lots of reference shots while I was yeah. there. Um, mm -hmm. it, it helped a lot when I went out with her in June. Um, you know, they would tell me where, you know, the director was with us too, uh, you know, where he was going to shoot or whatever. So I tried to, take a lot of um more comic book shots because i in my head i i was thinking you know comic book anyway uh mm -hmm. but i used it a lot in in the storyboard um but then to be on set while we were shooting you know i got to take you know pictures of everybody who was in costume and there was also uh chris chris was taking a lot of photos also of every person that was there uh chris evans not captain america chris evans but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he made yeah, sure this is awesome he was one of our backers and he became like our main number one pa for the whole shoot and everybody thought he's been doing it forever like he was such a such a blessing blessing for us like you know doing all these different jobs and stuff and not complaining and i remember marlin's scene right it was the scene I'm, I'm we're fighting actually which came kind it wasn't really i thought about it later and went oh we were trying to shoot this for you know economic value uh we had all the fight scenes almost in the first three days so i had a fight every day every day every day and it's Ooh, the first shit. day of shooting our first day of shooting we had 150 people on set right our first oh, wow. day and uh we were, we, you know, we have like like a, a place where the fights go, and it's like a corral, and everybody is standing around at the extras. And we started the fight probably, I would say, at eleven o'clock. We finished like about four thirty in the morning, and it was freezing. It was the coldest 
coldest day I think of summer uh, in in Arizona because it's the desert, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I just remember looking at Marley, <laughs> you know. The, oh, it was it, I'm telling you, I think nobody will forget how cold that was. And I remember, you know, your muscles get really tight from the cold, so you got to yeah. kick up. And uh, I ended up hitting Marcus in the groin once. I'm fighting him. <laughs> you know, I, right. I, I, so I could put my leg up, and he was like, "Oh, you got me in the stones." <laughs> 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 hey, it helped uh, warmed them up, you know. Yeah, exactly. How, so how did that work? Yeah, you never shooting... the comic book, the, the, that one. <laughs> yeah. So if if you're shooting in the daytime, right? Say you start at eleven. Is it the same fight? Like, what do you do now that if you end at four in the morning, you know, sun goes down? Yeah. How did you work around that? Like, well, we, we shot on a 12 hour schedule, so we didn't start at 11. We did a couple things. So we started at 4 30 to 4 30 in the morning, right? Oh, okay. Okay. So we, had, uh, we had Sundays off, so that would be the turnaround. So we shot pretty much all the night scenes, and then we had our, our day off, and then we could start Monday with the day scene. So, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you have to have a, a turnaround too when you're shooting. So, basically, the first part of the whole movie is the, the, the first. I would say maybe week and a half was night shoots. And then the last was day shoots. Mm -hmm. So much logistics goes involved. And, and yes. again, you had a hundred, if you, you're saying you have 150 people on set, where do you guys all stay? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you know, I tell you, I've been on some pretty, uh, pretty cheap productions, you know, where they had no place for the actors to stay. And you just had a, like even the main stars had to sit out there. Uh, I didn't want that. So I had trailers for all the main actors. And we had this big, huge room for the extras to come in. And then uh, one guy, uh, Bruce Martin, who was great, he brought this big uh, camper and anybody could go in there if they wanted. And, um, you know, we had these fire heaters outside. And it was funny. It was like one fire heater with like about 25 people all like sitting yeah. and, like trying to get warm. Yeah. You know? But yeah, we, we made sure that everybody was enclosed, you know, and uh, we let the, we told everybody ahead of time, you know, please bring uh, long underwear to put under your clothes because temperatures, you know, cause a lot of people think, you know, it, it's um, Arizona, you know, it's mm -hmm. October, it won't be that cold, but you know, it's the desert. And uh, yeah, ooh, yeah. It was, the first night I had to buy two more pairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Cynthia, let me ask you a question. So in, in the comics industry, right, there's been a big transition, even, you know, mainstream creators. A lot of them are doing a lot of things on their own now. They're going into crowdfunding. So they may still be working for DC or Marvel, but we're also seeing a lot of Kickstarters, Indiegogos coming from a lot of creators. Some have fully transitioned right out of mainstream corporate comics into fully independent self-publishing. Is that because you see a lot of movie reviews, right? And everyone has an opinion nowadays, but you do see there's there's more aggressive reviews on movies, people not liking a lot of stuff that comes out. Uh, you know, numbers are definitely down. Is that something in Hollywood? Or do you see maybe in, in your world of maybe other actors and, and actresses, whoever doing stuff that are now like, you know, what, I'm going to try to fund these things on my own to make the films I want to make? Yeah, I, I see that a lot, you know, uh, especially in, in the genre, the women, you know, doing it because, uh, you know, they're like, you know, for me now doing my own movie, it's like, yeah, I, I wish I could just sustain myself doing my own movies, you know, because you're in control of it. You know, you're, you know, like you could, you could, you have control of what your character looks like, says, does, you know, what everybody else does. And um, I see that a lot. And I think that's why they're doing it, you know, is so they they can uh, control of what they want because sometimes, you know, like I've done 70 movies and, you know, some of them are, I like, and some I, I don't like, and you have no control as an actor, you know, when you're the producer or, or executive producer, you know, you can, you can, you have the control of everything. And I think a lot of people are doing that and mostly because they want to do the parts they want to do and, you know, not get cast in other things like, Oh yeah, I'll do that. But, you know, I'm just doing it because it's my job, but, you know, I really want to do this project because I, I love it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like, you know, my baby project. So I'm seeing that a lot more. 
Mm -hmm. I tell you, it's not easy. It's really hard. I've learned a lot on this first film, learned a lot of things, you know, how to make it better on the next one. But uh, yeah, it's like probably two years of your life, you know, going through the first year and then this, after you finish now another year. Gosh, that's crazy. Man. And do you think making comics are hard, huh, Billy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I made a short film. I made a film. I, I, don't know. I think the comics is hard. <laughs> this, one, this one is easier for me. I just get yeah. it here than Marlon's better. Let's guess. bring up that campaign again, Niall, and we'll scroll yes, through sir. it. Um, because we're all right. And it looks great. And you guys are closing in on your twenty-five thousand dollars stretch goal. You're already unlocked one stretch goal. You've got twenty-seven days left. Um, guys, this looks great. Marlon, your art looks fantastic in it. It's awesome, man. You're Thank killing you. it. Thank you. I, I will say it was a surreal experience on set to see everything that I drew come to life. Like, mm -hmm. I almost felt like I, the horse that Cynthia rode in on looked like the horse I drew. <laughs> like I manifested it. It was crazy. <laughs> So cool. and this is a hundred and six. If people people are curious now to see what that horse looks like that you drew, so maybe yes. uh in this campaign or on the film campaign, you send out an update with a, a new a new uh perk, the, yes. the storyboard uh edition yes. or something. And you know what's also great too is that so we're getting so much buzz like from this that uh um Ron Crawford is doing a, a martial art con in Denver and mm -hmm. Marlon is invited and he has a, a lot of the people from Black Creek coming. Uh, so we're going to do a panel and hopefully we could we could screen the trailer there. But it's like one of the biggest martial art uh, get togethers of people like it's kind of like a comic con, but it's like a martial art con first time he's doing it. So a lot of good things are happening for people, uh, you know, because of this movie. Some of the actors have already gotten jobs. Uh, oh, already, great. You know, I, I, I love it. I love it. It's just, you know, uh, it's just a win-win for everybody. Yeah. I think you're going to inspire a lot of, of, of your fellow uh, creatives out there to start to want to make their own graphic novels and, and their own films, because it's, it's like comics today with the outreach of the internet. Um, it's never, it, it's not easy. And I'm coming from a comic book perspective, um, but there's never been a better time to, to make, you know, Niall and I call this the new goal, the, the golden age of creator owned comics, because anyone can do it. You have, you know, because you have such resources within your reach, you know, via the internet and to use the internet for good. How about that? Imagine that, um, mm -hmm. you know, for promotion and you have Instagram and, and things like that and, and Kickstarter and, and Indiegogo and Facebook. And I mean, you know, all that stuff. Um, it's a great way to reach and to reach the public directly without any of these so-called, you know, these bigwig types who are the pros telling you, ah, that'll never sell. We'll pass on that. Well, the fans want it. And you could, you've, you've yeah. shown that with just having them help you create your film and your comic. Yeah. And I'm hoping too, that this will give a crossover into the comic book world, you know, because mm -hmm. I, Definitely, I think a lot of the backers uh, for the movie were uh, like fans. And, and they say, you know, it's interesting that Facebook is like maybe the third or fourth uh, uh, genre that, that you'll get your money from on, on one of the crowdfunding platforms. And that was my number one. Uh, you know, when you go, it'll tell you, you know, how much came in from Kickstarter, what came from here, what came from it here. And uh, my biggest one was from Facebook, which is from the fans, which is great, you know. So um, I really want this comic book to be like, like, I want all those all you comic book fans out there to go, wow, I love that. I love that. Let's do another one. You know, so uh, that's, that's what Marlon and I are, are striving for is to make this like so super, uh, that comic book people out there will not only if they're not martial art fans, but they say, wow, I, I love that as a comic book. Mm -hmm. yeah. And well, actually what's really great about this too, Cynthia is if you look at like Japanese culture, right. And you look at manga and anime, yeah. you know, that's what their fans love is they go and they pick up their manga, but they also have their anime and then they have their movies. But when it's like, like for this IP, right. They can just have other ways of absorbing more of that IP they love. So they can read the books, they can watch the movies, they can do all this stuff. So, you know, what you're hitting on is really what I think, you know, entertainment in the U.S. with, with our movies and shows and comics need to do is, is kind of bring that same culture. 
because that is big with their culture. And with you doing the movie and the book, that's that's an awesome start to building this universe, which is really cool. Yeah, I think most time most people do the book first and then the movie. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, thought, right. I, thought, I always thought, you know, oh, Marlon, let's do a graph. And this is what we talked about. Let's do a graphic novel and then maybe it could be turned into a movie, right? But I did it different. I did the movie and said, okay, now let's do the co let's do the graphic novel. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And it's an now easy we... way to keep the story going too, though. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. continue on with the graphic novel stuff, even if you're you're working on the films or put some subplots and stuff in between that maybe could tie in. Like there's so much you can do with it, which is so absolutely, cool. absolutely. And two things, uh, Daniel Russell here. Uh, it's I'm sorry I'm late. I have some money left over from the auction last night. Sorry, uh, since I got outbid by Billy's piece. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, throw that money to uh, to Marlon and Cynthia and, and back this wonderful project. And then um, Cynthia. Uh, is it your birthday? Tomorrow is. Oh, oh. Happy, birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, tomorrow's my birthday. Um, I already started celebrating it. Some friends of mine were from Australia and we went and saw Madonna and then we went to the John Waters, uh, uh, ex exhibition yesterday. So, uh, yeah, so today was a work day for me and then tomorrow, tomorrow I, I, I got, I said, okay, uh, talking to Robert, you know, Robert Clancy said, let's go do a big hike in the morning. That's what I'd like to do for my birthday is just yeah. get out there in nature and, and hike. <laughs> and we got Matt, Matt S here says, uh, Cynthia Rothrock. How did I miss this? Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> Hi, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much uh, for coming on. What a wonderful yes. show. Um, I know that we were talking earlier that you have some conventions you guys will be at. Coming up soon, do you want to let everyone know and where they can reach you? And and we put the, the link in the description, of course. So people, please check out the campaign. Um, if you if you if you already um pledge for it, or if you cannot at this time, at least share it on your social media. We have you know two amazing artists here. Um, and uh I love the and just doing their own thing, you know, taking the bull by the horns and you know, their uh their destinies in their own hands and their fists. And just creating some uh, fantastic art. And oh, we got a, a super oh, chat. Hang a on. Super chat. Miss Rothrock, thank you for being. Well, first of all, 200 watts, too. Thank you for the $2 super chat. Thank you for being here. Huge fan. When you were filming in Hong Kong, what was your favorite filming moment? Oh, that's oh, a good question. Uh, I, I had so many favorite filming moments, but it had to be those crazy, those crazy stunts where I almost killed myself that they had me do. And I, I honestly didn't think I could do this. It was like almost like it was like almost superhuman, like doing these movements. But uh, every Hong Kong movie I did, I had about three fight scenes in it where I, I thought I was going to die. So I think, you know, that's my crazy mind. I would be all bruised up, uh, limping. You know, I got hit in the jaw where it split my internal ear open. And the Ooh. doctor said, oh, yeah, it's split open, but it's too deep. We can't get to it. So go back to filming. Um, you know, like I had so many injuries, but it's it's like crazy because uh, – like I told you, if you like Marlon knows me, I'm I'm a little kind of crazy, so I like doing crazy things. <laughs> and so that's my favorite moments is those uh, big scenes. Uh, I'll say, for example, like Yes, Madam, which is um, you know a lot of these companies are remastering these movies and they're coming out now on Blu-ray and 4K. Uh, I did a, a split on the wall. I did a cartwheel with an aerial with a split on a wall, and that was like one of my favorite movements because that was a a very very uh, hard scene. Uh, you know, to shoot. <laughs> you suffer for your art. <laughs> you do. And you love it too. So what's 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 yeah. else you want to tell you about that? <laughs> so and, uh, so where Russell have you guys back. been? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry now. Hey, thank I you. Dan. Daniel Russell backed it. You're thank at 70 you, backers. Are you guys doing a Kickstarter for this as well? Um no, we're just doing it Indiegogo on this one. So our Kickstarter uh, is still up for the Black Creek uh, movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the Indiegogo is, uh, we're only doing Indiegogo for the, um, uh, the, for the graphic novel. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's great. No, thank you, sir. Well, guys, uh, thank you. So uh, where, are we, where are you going to be, Cynthia and Marlon? Where can people meet you guys and talk more Black Creek? 
Yeah, well, uh, we, I guess our next event we will be at uh, together will be uh, in Denver, Colorado. That is, I think, April 27th and 28th. And I post everything on my Facebook page and it's public. So anybody could go there and always see uh, what's going on or the website. So we have that event. And then um, what, what else, Marlon? Um, you might have some. I think that's, that's our first Black Creek. Hopefully, like yeah. I said, we'll have the premiere in Vegas in July. Um, but as far as, uh, black people getting together, that's, that's our, our first biggie is, the uh, the, um, Denver Marshall Con and, uh, I'll see Heroes Con. uh, yeah. I know that. I'll see you at Heroes Con then brother. I'll, I'll be there too. too. Nice. We're going to have to have a drink and we'll toast to black Creek. Yeah. That was a great. Well, you know, I just returned from the London Comic Con. And that was huge. Oh my gosh, that was so good. And like you talk about crossover with comics and and uh, martial arts, you know, we they had on Saturday fifteen thousand people come through, and like for four days in a row, I never left my seat. Like signing, signing, signing. It was like so great that uh, there's so many um, there were at that so many martial arts fans and so many you know comic book fans. I, I just love like bringing those two genres together. Well, you're doing a fantastic job. Do you, you do San Diego Comic Con? I yeah, we have. I have. I think Marlon, right? You were there too. Uh, actually, um, they asked me every year to come and do a panel, like a martial art panel, and I tried to uh, when when I can. I know it's in July, and last year I I was uh, uh, I was busy. I was out of the, out of the country, so I'm gonna try to do it this July. We'll see, we'll see. On yeah, I think it, I think it'll be it'll be a it'll be good for you if you can make it because I think you could really yeah. promote the film and the, and the and the graphic novel. I mean, that's the place to yeah. do it too. And exactly, and, uh, yeah. And I'm just selfish because I'm going to be there, so I want to meet you in person. Yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> we got to have it ready by then. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then you can go to the San Diego Comic Con. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Incentive, incentive for yeah. Marlon to do And that. Aaron Sleeper, thank you for that two for dollar ninety nine super chat. Thank you. Did you ever get to act uh, act with Meet Shang? Pay, 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 is it Pay Pay? Yes. Uh, no, we've never been in a, in a film together. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe in, in Black yeah, Creek, you too. Never know, right? There you go, yeah. right? You know, when I grew up, uh, Jackie Chan was my idol. Like, I would always, I would watch his movies in Chinatown, go home and copy his moves. And I was almost in a movie with him, but that's when he did Armor of God. I was supposed to be his adversary, and he got hurt. So they put me with you in view instead. But I, I still have not done a movie with Jackie Chan. So I, I, that, I would love to do that since he was, like, my hero, like, in the movies growing up. Probably and the Karate Kid, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Well, no, they're, they're looking, they're they're getting people together for that movie for Karate yeah. Kid. Jackie yeah, yeah. they well, they watching. mentioned me on one of the episodes. I remember I was coming from an airport, and my phone was blowing up, like going, "Oh, you were just on the, on the Karate Kid." I was like, "What? What? What? What are you talking about?" You know. So it was really cool. They gave me a shout out on that. I love that. It's funny because you know, like when you you play adversaries or villains, it's I and mean, you're like the nicest person. You know, it's like, you're like ah. so that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I could be me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you're a mom, so yeah, so I can see that. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, thank you so much. I, I again, Niall and I were so excited to have you both on. We love this idea of everyone else does of melding comics and film, but also that you're doing it yourselves, mm -hmm. and that yeah. uh, I think you should be really proud of yourself for the, for the accomplishment that you did. And looking forward to Black Creek 2. After after this, and to and to start the funding, uh, you know, a, another crowdfunded campaign, and and uh, you guys are just great. We appreciate you being on. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Um, really appreciate it. And hopefully, right. yeah, hope you in San Diego at the Comic Con to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, right. definitely. And happy birthday, Cynthia. Yes, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys for all watching us. Um, I know Thursday night's a huge night. Uh, people are streaming live, but for those of you who don't catch it live, thanks for joining us on the uh, the replay. And all so, the links are below, so click the link if you want to check out the campaigns. They're below. And also while you're down there, make sure to click that subscribe button and smash that bell so you get notifications when we go live like we are now or when we're posting some awesome recorded content. So again, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you all next week. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Marlon. Tucci, as always, let's hit that bell, brother. Yeah.
Have a good night, everyone. Good night, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, guys. Hey, everyone. Thank you for, hey, joining, us Thank you for joining us on Pop. If you haven't already, make sure you haven't that already. Subscribe button. Click that subscribe and also click button. the bell for and notifications. And also click the bell for we go live, live and we upload some awesome new. Content. Also, don't forget to head on also, over to Twitter. Don't forget to head on over to follow Twitter us at, and the follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.